<laughs> We're back. Uh, this is Matt Kempner. I'm a business columnist with the Atlanta Journal-Constitution here with Steve Cannon, who is the CEO of AMB Group, which is the parent of the Atlanta Falcons. And we are on the roof of the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, which is gonna be opening uh, later this month. Uh, and we're talking about the roof the beauty or the coolness of the roof, but also a little bit of the challenges, big challenges, with uh, getting the retractable roof going. Part of the problem, or the challenge, was that they decided to be cool and groovy with the roof and do it in a very different way than most domes are done. And, and the result is it's, it's got these eight pedals that move in a, a cool way, and that's made things more complex. Steve here tells me he'd do it all over again. Great design, you call it cool and groovy, Matt. Uh, great design uh, is not easy. So think of the great buildings on, on this planet, whether that's the Opera House in Sydney, whether that's the Eiffel Tower, great structures uh, have break some ground on design. Back then, those were uh, those pushed the envelope. I guarantee you, although I, I don't know the budgets of each of those projects and I don't know the timelines, each of those projects took longer than the engineers expected, probably cost more than the engineers expected, but when you're trying to do something memorable, trying to do something worthwhile, trying to break out of the mold of every other stadium and sports entertainment venue out there, there's uh, there's risk associated with that. There's always risk associated in life, especially when you push the boundaries. And we feel really good about the risks that we take, because when this is all done, and this is again, a couple months of delay relative to a building that will that will now be a landmark in the heart of Atlanta. Uh, we feel like all the risks were worth it. And you said, would I do it all over again? And the answer is absolutely yes. I'd be a little bit smarter, but what I'm proud of is that every single Every single time we were confronted with a challenge, we evaluated the challenge and we solved the problem. So in the beginning, uh, Atlanta United was supposed to play here starting in the June time frame. Well, the delays caused us to have to pivot. We found a relationship with, with Bobby Dodd. We launched the franchise in an alternate stadium, not ideal for soccer. And in fact, we got off to such a great start that some of our so soccer supporters are saying, we love it here at Bobby Dodd. We're nervous about coming to Mercedes-Benz Stadium. That's how good of a job the team did in dealing with a setback, and out of that setback, they made they, they made something really memorable in launching that franchise. What would you do differently? You said you might be do something a little bit smarter. What would that be? Look, uh, no. In 2020 hindsight, uh, I would have built in a larger a, a larger buffer, right? Whenever you of time. do, of, of course, because. Things never go exactly the way the way they're planned. Especially if you think about how these types of buildings are designed, they're designed on a computer, and all the stresses and all the loads across all of these giant trusses are are modeled in a computer. And then you have to take that model and you have to build it in three dimensions in steel and in glass and in concrete. And there's variations between what the model says and what the real world load actually shows up to be. And each time that's just caused us to reinforce over here or do something over there. So that's a normal process of engineering. That process, with the com given the complexity of this design, has taken longer than we anticipated. Is so if I could have gone back, I would have taken it back the construction a whole nother year. I would have started a whole year earlier to have given us more runway for the unexpected. What, uh, what, how much did the roof cost? What was it budgeted to cost? And what did it actually cost? I, I don't have those numbers, nor would I give them to you, Matt, if I did. Ball so, part, ball nice part. try. Hundreds no, no, of millions? No. This is a $1.5 billion stadium. Uh, it, we, uh, we started out with a lower number, and that number crept up given the complexity. But I would I would also say, given all the decisions that we put into the building, uh, Arthur, to his credit, worked back from the premise that we want to build the most fan-friendly, the best sports and entertainment venue on the planet. And the decisions that he made laddered up to that. So from taking the 19-inch dome seat and making it 21 inches, that adds cost and that adds yeah. size to the building, but it's a more comfortable seat. Uh, that's just one example. We added uh, we added 100% more escalators, 100% more elevators, so people could move freely between the first concourse and the second concourse and the third concourse and circulate freely around the building. All that cost extra money. So it's not just that the roof costs all this money, it's the decisions that went into 
the building itself and creating a fan-friendly environment that, that ultimately added to the cost of this building. Do we have any questions? I I'm not seeing any right now. Okay. Um, but it's all right. No one's, no one's watching. <laughs> just, it's just Matt and I having a conversation. I'm, I'm in front, enjoying it. In front of an, in front of an iPhone. <laughs> we, can we walk this way yeah, and sure. maybe see if sure. we can shoot uh, backwards and show what, what we can see of the roof? So we're on the roof, but we're not at the tippity top of the roof. That's up there. And we're about to see it. that dress the, each of the petals. It provides insulation from, from below. On the top of that yeah. is the Mercedes-Benz Star, which covers a surface area of more than 10 acres. Yeah. So the Mercedes-Benz Star has got a diameter of more than 100 yards. It's the largest corporate logo on the planet Earth, and I'm pretty sure you can see it from the International Space Station. Okay, here we, I'm pulling up some questions now. Space Station. All right, here we go. Some, All see right. See any questions here. So let's see. Uh, once it's up and running, uh, Christopher asks, how long will it take to open up? So once the roof, uh, Matt, once the roof is fully mechanized, we can we can go from the closed position to the open position in about 11 or 12 minutes. 11 or 12 minutes. Okay. Um, Somebody asked how much longer, this is uh, out, how much longer before the COO is obtained? We're, that's the ability to open it up and let yeah, people yeah. in. Uh, we, have a, we have a temporary CO, so that, that's a, um, we, have, we have COs, temporary COs for parts of the building. We're awaiting our CO, I can't, it's, 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 uh, it's any day now, it's in the very, very near future. Yeah. Uh, but that depends on, on the inspectors and the fire marshal, and and they get annoyed when you say it's going to be on a particular date. So I'm not going to give you a date, but it's going to happen very, very soon. How long, uh, let's see. <laughs> Mark wants to know, and I think this is a very good question. Mark wants to know, will this help the Falcons win all this year? We have created an incredible environment for our Falcons. We have taken Matt Ryan, the coaching staff, some of our team have come in and they're in awe of this building. Yes. Our job as, as the team and the fan base is if we can create an electric environment yes. that creates a home field, home field advantage, that fuels our Falcons, I have no doubt that that energy pumped right into the, into the brotherhood will yield a very, very positive result. We could not be more positive and more excited about, about the upcoming season. So, so this is, and let, let me repeat for a second, I'm Matt Kempner with the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. I'm a business columnist, so don't ask me any football questions, uh, unless it's college football. Uh, and I'm here with Steve Cannon from, he's the CEO of AMB Group, which is the parent of the Falcons, the Atlanta Falcons. We're on the roof, I love saying that, of the uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, which will open later this month and have games of Atlanta United soccer and also the Atlanta Falcons, obviously. There's been some challenges with the retractable roofs. Believe it or not, this, this wall you see over here is not really a wall. It's a piece of the retractable roof, one of eight 500-ton pedals. You see some corners of the other ones in the distance there that will run across rails and open up and create a very cool-looking opening. But again, there's some challenges on making this thing work. The roof pedals and the, the challenges of the retractable roof have repeatedly delayed the opening. Now they're not going to be ready to move automatically uh, before the season starts. And how long is it going to be again before they are? Before uh, they're uh, able to move automatically. And So again, we start on the 26th. We're less than 30 days until our first big event, preseason against the Arizona Cardinals. We're really, really excited about that. Uh, we, we've got 16 events a after that that, that will uh, that will happen over a 50-day period where we're going to invite almost a million people from the greater Atlanta area into the Chick-fil-A kickoff classics, those, those two games that we've got. We've got uh, Atlanta United matches, we've got preseason football, we've got our season opener on the 17th against the Green Bay Packers. So there is a really intense startup schedule. The mechanization of the roof will happen in and around those events. So unlike being able to do that in a closed environment, right, when we were ramping up, because of the delays, we're going to now have to mechanize, automate the roof 
in and around an event schedule that's pretty robust. So I don't yet have a date when I can say, by that date I'll be able to push a button and 11 minutes later the roof will be open. Um, I, as soon as I have that information, I'm gonna give that out. Any guess on a month? Look, what, here's what I know. Uh, um, the roof will be operational, is operational, but we will have it, uh, we'll have it open for both the Falcons and Atlanta United in this season. When exactly, whether that's in October, uh, when in October or early November, I can't give you that date. Open and automated. Yes. Gotcha. Now, one one thing that I wondered about is this This is a very cool roof. A lot of money spent on it. He's not saying how much, uh, but it is, uh, it's a really cool architectural feature. Um, but I think it's one that, uh, as cool it as it is, if you're in a plane, maybe you can see it opening up. But will regular fans actually really ever get to see it open or close? Uh, yes. So, but, but from the inside. And if you watch that opening and closing from the inside, it's a really neat process. So again, it looks like you're just looking up at the aperture of a camera that, that opens up. Uh, so depending on, the, depending on the game or the match, in the football, for example, you have to declare open or close 90 minutes, and then you have to stay in that configuration, unless, of course, there's a, there's a lightning storm. And we had to evacuate Atlanta United several times for lightning storms for, uh, at Bobby Dodd. So in an, in, in an instance like that, if we saw a, a, a set of storm cells approaching, we could begin the closing process and, and then avoid having to evacuate. We just close the roof and we can continue operation. So there will be instances where fans We'll see that, but it's not like we'll we're going to be. We'll see it actually moving open and close. Oh, yeah, yes. But you're not going to do it. For, it'll be at least an hour and a half before a, a football game. When will they get to game. see it? But if you're at Atlanta United, that's not a regulation for Atlanta United. You're in a match, ah. and we're playing in an open position, and we know that there's a storm cells that are approaching. We decide uh, there's lightning in those storm cells, so we need to close the roof. Yeah. So we will close the roof rather than evacuate the stadium during the game. So, yes. Yeah. Now, and will you do that in a way that helps? Atlanta United win games. Is that <laughs> Everything we do is designed to help Atlanta United win games. Oh, there you go. That is why we're building this structure. We're not building, this is, a, this is going to be a palace of winning for both Atlanta United a and for the Falcons. A palace of winning. Not, we, we, we're not building it to, to, to lose. It's very right. cool, but up, these, this roof up close, it looks like those uh, packing bubbles. That's exactly right. That's bit. exactly right. In fact, um, Can we pop they, they would make a loud pop Matt, and it might startle some of our some of our workers here, so yep. we're not going to do that. All right. Uh, but again, those are air air filled insulating pillows that uh, that actually have there's a continual flow of air that, that keeps them that keeps them inflated. Yes. Uh, and that's not that's not a unique design. You've seen that. We've seen this design. The the the, the plastic material is called ETFE. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you'll see that in, in other installations around the country. All right. Now as uh, let me just ask this question. Uh, I, I was asking you this on the way up. You didn't want me to ask you on camera because I'm going to be putting you in a difficult position. But uh -oh. it's the nicest question I can ask of all the difficult questions. Um, my kids want to know, will the public ever be allowed to come up here to see the cool roof? We are going to have an incredible tour business for your kids, which, which will begin in October. I can receive no kids, special treatment. For kids and groups, that's going to get them all around the stadium. They're going to go into the locker room. Coach Quinn is going to greet them. They're even going to be able to get onto the field and kick soccer balls and yep. kick footballs around. So we believe that our, our tour business will provide that. And oh, by the way, there's 150 art installations inside of the building. I'll yes. point out a few of them when we go back inside. Yeah. And those are from international artists, national, regional, and local artists from around the Atlanta and, yeah. and the Georgia area. Really unique, some sports themed, some societally themed. But the, alone, the, taking that art tour uh, of those 150 installations would be a significant tour in, in and of itself. So we're excited about the tour business. Probably not gonna include a roof tour, uh, just because this is, uh, this is a working environment, and uh, we're gonna, we made an exception for you, Matt. But I'm not sure this is gonna this is gonna be part of our tour business. I was asking somebody outside how much they would pay to get on the roof, and somebody was saying 30 bucks, 50 bucks. Ryan over here wants to drop 75. And for the record, for the record, Matt and Ryan paid nothing to be up here right now. That's right. Okay, disclaimer. And beautiful, beautiful uh, scenery here, as you see the city of Atlanta uh, behind us. You get a sense, Matt, being this close. We're only 85 feet from the Georgia Dome. That's how far the construct the distance between Mercedes-Benz Stadium and eventually that's going to come down. Yes, which uh, is very sad. 
which uh, on, on November 20th, we will implode that. And that uh, roughly 11 acre space will be the Home Depot backyard, which is gonna be a, a really neat tailgating experience connected to the stadium itself. But we, we turned that into a public space. So that's gonna become a public space that will help connect the west side to a Falcons Landing and Centennial Park and essentially be a bridge between the challenged west side and open up that area into into midtown and into downtown so we're excited about that i, I like that uh, i'm looking at questions here i'm not uh, ignoring what uh, steve is saying here uh, somebody asked again how long does it take the roof to open you told me 11 to 13 minutes essentially right and I feel like I'm having a conversation with one of my kids who never, who never look up from their device when they're, when they're talking to Dad, me. So. What? <laughs> um, uh, somebody asked how much bigger, this is Charles, uh, is asking how much bigger is Mercedes-Benz Stadium than the Georgia Dome? It's significantly bigger. So the Georgia Dome right over there is roughly 1.6 million square feet, and this is a little over 2 million square feet. So that's the that's the difference between the two buildings. And we're looking down on it. It's way And, and way we are. Lower. And if you saw a side-by-side -side picture, uh, in, in fact, um, we've posted several, you, you can actually see how much Mercedes-Benz Stadium dwarfs the Georgia Dome. Does this, uh, is anything about the uh, about the, the Mercedes-Benz Stadium uh, engineering uh, going to amplify the, the crowd noise more than the Georgia Dome did? We, um, not specifically designed. This is, uh, from an acoustic standpoint, this is going to be so far superior to the Georgia Dome. So we, we crank the music and the PA system. It is clean, it is crisp, more than 30 more than 3,000 Danley speakers are throughout the building. So that's gonna be a, a, a tremendous improvement. The problem inside the Georgia Dome, whenever we made announcements, the people couldn't understand. It was so muddled, the, the acoustics were terrible. So the acoustics are much cleaner here. Uh, we haven't filled this building and it's gonna depend on, on uh, 71,000 screaming fans in Atlanta to bring an energy and a noise level that will, imp that will uh, that will scare our, our opponents. So we're looking, we're looking forward to it. I, I wanna ask a, a couple more quick questions. The number one reason, there, there were delays because of the roof in opening the facility. Uh, it's months later than I think you had hoped for. Um, what was the main reason that the roof uh, took so much longer? What was most off about it, if that's the right word. It's it's not really just it's not the roof. It's we have we have a very complex, a kind of an erector set of trusses. More than a hundred a hundred trusses are 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 joined together to form the skeletal structure that carries the roof. And so I, I don't want to put all the blame on the movable roof. The movable roof sits on top of a very complex skeletal truss structure, and the truss structure again was built in a computer model that then had to be made out of steel and bolts in 27,000 tons uh, of, of steel. So think about the magnitude of that and as we progressed from model to reality we had to reinforce here, we had to adjust over there. This is normal steel work that takes place for projects all across the country. That process given the complexity, given the number of trusses, a span of a single truss that's longer than 300 feet. Uh, that level of complexity added some of the delay. So I don't want to get, you know, pause it. It's essentially a complex building that's never been built before. And because of that, this system took longer to build than we expected. What was uh, Arthur Blank, the owner of the Atlanta Falcons, what was his reaction after each of these delays? He got the news, hey, your beautiful building, it's gonna be beautiful, but it, it it's not gonna be when we said. I've been, I've been delighted and impressed by Arthur's long view of this project. He's, yeah. you know, rather than wringing his hands and saying, we've got a problem and why are we a month delayed, two months delayed, he said, this is a building that's gonna be here and it's gonna be an incredible addition to Atlanta for the next 30 years. And yes, it's complex, but 30 days, 60 days, and people are not gonna remember that. And the fan experience that we have created, that we are so excited to debut on the 26th, once folks get in this building and they see the wide concourses and the natural light that's coming in and the number of amenities that are not just on the on the first concourse but on the second concourse and on the third concourse the number of amenities that we've put together for our fan base we know will amaze and delight them and these this discussion about a roof that got delayed for a couple of months 
is going to be ancient history much faster than you know it, Matt. Uh, 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 another Al says, will there be a soft opening to, the, to tour the stadium before the 26th? We are planning on a, on a, um, on a soft opening uh, to, our, to our season ticket holders for both Atlanta United and for the Falcons, and that's, uh, that's a date that's going out shortly. Okay, very good. And then Julie asks, here's a tough question, right? Okay. Uh, she says, um, uh, when, when regular fans, she essentially wants to know when regular fans can get a single ticket. Uh, a single game ticket. Uh, the goal is, for the Falcons has been, I think you all you have told me, was to essentially sell a whole bunch of, uh, of seat licenses, uh, which is an upfront fee that people pay, which just gives them the, the right to be able to then buy season tickets. And I guess it, it, it sounds like a whole bunch of the, of the uh, stadium has already been sold which limits the number of tickets that an average person can buy where they're just buying a single ticket uh, from the Falcons. Tell me what we should know about so that. So first, the seat license is an ownable asset, right? That's not just something that you buy to get the right to. That is something that if you were to, that you own, and that when you leave town and decide, let's say you, you move or get transferred somewhere else, you can sell that, that asset back and then we'll resell it for you and you'll get your money back. So it's not just money to buy the right to buy a season ticket. So let's just correct that. That's an investment that will come back to you. Um, the, the building will have thousands of seats available uh, depending on the matchup uh, where we'll have group sales that'll go out. We'll have, uh, we'll, we have a, a set of expandable seats that have no seat license attached to it, thousands of those that for our bigger games will deploy. So there will be the opportunity for our fans, our passionate fans that want to get in, that maybe don't want to buy a seat license, aren't in the market for a season ticket, but would love to come to a particular game. There will be, there will be more than ample access for, that, for those individuals. In fact, we, we did a kind of back of the napkin calculation 10% of the inventory of this building is going to be available to, to fans in one way or the other who have not uh, gotten a season ticket, whether that's through group sales. We have a very active program where Arthur, Coach, and all of our players essentially set aside hundreds of seats and make them available that we distribute through our foundation to folks who maybe wouldn't be able to come here, maybe can't pay the ticket price. But let me debunk it. Th that 10% debunk... is not does not include the secondary market. That's not, that's not the secondary market. That's yeah. not the secondary market. And, and, and we really value price. So the, 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 the least expensive PSL, $500, and there were thousands of those, can be financed over 10 years. That ownable asset that I talked about. So that's $50 a year per game. That's a cup of coffee. And then the ticket price 60, is? $65. Starts at $65? $65 is, is, the, is the entry point is on, that, the, on is, the upper concourse. Yes. Is that, that's not just the retractable seats? No, no, that, no that's, that's not the, the retractable. That's the regular seats. We haven't even and talked about pricing. To... And then it goes up to seats that are significantly more expensive on the 50 yard line down on the 100 concourse. How much am I going to have to pay for that? You're going to have to pay uh, thousands. It, it goes up to. Is that just because the, I've been asking mean questions? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, again, accessibility to this building $65 ticket, $5 underlying seat license, that's $70 a game. That's that, and, and when you add in the fact that you can feed a family of four for under $30 with our concession. <laughs> pricing, <laughs> the value inside of this building is phenomenal, man. Very it's good. phenomenal. Uh, listen, uh, I'm Matt Kepner with the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, a business columnist for the AJC. Here with Steve Cannon, who has been good enough to, uh, to talk to me, chat with us, and shit, answer some of your questions. He is the CEO of AMB Group, which is the parent of the Atlanta Falcons. We're on the roof of the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Uh, the thing is supposed to open later this month. It will open, he insists, and he insists that this retractable roof, which has been a little pesky, will actually be fully automated and actually be able to go the way it's supposed to go. For more information, check out myajc.com, uh, and uh, thanks for listening in.